unprecedented time in history. And 2012 is much more than 2012. I call it the moment of truth era because whatever's going on this year, especially toward the end of 2012, is what will be going on globally and individually for people for the next 10 to 14 years. So it's more than just about now. It's a trend and uh, the way the energies are uh, arranging themselves on the planet right now. And these energies are insistent and they are insistent upon transformation. And so we've seen it. We look around the globe, we see demonstrations, uprising, violence, people saying, I've had enough. I want and need things to be different and I'm willing to lose my life over it. That's powerful. On an individual level, I see people leaving long-term marriages. I see people leaving their career spaces saying, I need to feel connected to what I'm doing. I need to feel like what I'm contributing is really me. It's really mine. It's, it's unique to me. I'm seeing that all over the place. So that's the, mo and this is the moment of truth energy of 2012. Whatever's been in the back of your mind, whatever has been uh, gnawing at you, it's coming up and it's not going to go away. The great part about this is that when you see and recognize what's going on on the planet and you look at these frequencies, if you jump into it and decide, I'm going to transform, you're really going with the current of transformation and you will have great success in your transformation process. That's the great news about 2012. well-meaning people we always do the best we can with what we know but the model that we have followed for so long is the achievement model you have to achieve 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 make it happen make it happen make it happen that's how you find happiness and fulfillment in life and how many, how many zeros in your bank account, how beautiful your car is, how beautiful your spouse is, where you live, um, what kind of job you have, what's your title, um, all that, how much power you have, all these things are supposedly what are going to make us happy. But unfortunately, or fortunately, however you look at it, achievements don't make us happy. They're not, they're not possible of delivering that necessarily. And that's for a couple of reasons. There's two forms of consciousness on this planet. The brilliant mind ego consciousness, the heart consciousness, the feeling consciousness. This thing up here is designed to deal with issues of a finite nature. They have to have a beginning, a middle, and an end. This is great for how do I fill out tax forms? How do I solve this mathematical formula? How do I read this map? How do I create a grocery list? It's all those things that have a beginning, a middle, and an end. When you want to answer questions about how do I get myself happy? How do I find my soulmate? Uh, how do I connect to life purpose? You can't get those answers from this thing. It doesn't have the capability to be that expansive. You have to go to the wisdom of the heart with the unlimited information of the divine running through you. You have to say, how do I feel about X, Y, or Z? And so the game on the planet is which form of consciousness do you use to solve whatever your issue is? get what you believe you deserve in life. 
And so deserving is a feeling. So that requires that we go into the heart and examine, do I deserve? Why don't I think I deserve? Who told me I don't deserve? You really have to go in and get to know yourself and say, self, what's going on there? Because I guarantee you, if you don't feel you deserve in life, I don't care if you win the lottery, you're not going to have consistent abundance in your life. It's just not possible. You will find a way to sabotage it. You will lose it. You will run out. Because deserving is a natural attractant to prosperity. And it's deserving from the point of view that I am, so I deserve. It's my birthright. I exist, and that's why I deserve. It's not something you earn. It's not something you go get. It's something that you remember is true about you. And when you embody that feeling of I deserve because I am, prosperity, consistent prosperity becomes much easier. Life is working for you. People say, what? My life sucks right now. I, you know, I'm in financial devastation. I have no love in my life. I hate my job, blah, blah, blah. Well, you're looking at life through the small lens. Step back and look at your life through the big lens, the wisdom of the heart, and you will see that as a soul, as a spirit, what you're doing in this human experience is small in comparison to who you are. So maybe consciously, on a physical level, you didn't say, sign me up for getting divorced. Yeah, I want that. Sign me up for cancer, please. I like to have some of that. But you're more than a body. So spiritually, you said, I'd like to learn about compassion I'd like to, from both sides. I'd like to learn about pain and healing. I'd like to learn about certain components that come with these experiences. And so the ability to see life through the larger lens, not just the small lens of the human experience, is key. It's, it's key to being able to create the abundance, the prosperity, the love that you so desire and deserve. And it's your birthright to have it. prosperity experts out there selling lots of prosperity programs and you know uh, for all kinds of money thousands and thousands of dollars and you can pay that money if you'd like whatever you think is right for you but nobody can give you what it is you need it's really a process of uncovering the truth your truth and having it reveal itself to you. You know, there's a lot of marketing strategies that say, I have 15 secrets. <laughs> I have 15 secrets or five secrets or three secrets to prosperity. And that's all good and wonderful, but there are no secrets. There really aren't. The only thing that really stands between people and their information about prosperity and abundance is fear. And so you have to go into the heart space Figure out what you're afraid of, why you're afraid of it, and a few other techniques. And then you start to feel more comfortable with, oh, I can reconnect to myself and, oh my goodness, I kind of know what's right for me. And, oh my gosh, I should just follow what I'm being, you know, guided to do. Oh, like, it's not hard. It's just been programmed out of it. We're out of practice of listening to ourselves. It's not a secret, my friends. My system is one that works for people every time, all the time. Because it is a process that reconnects you to your own wisdom. And once you have that, you're reconnected to that, and you honor that, you can't help but have more benevolence and abundance and prosperity in your life. When you acknowledge that you have divine love and wisdom within you, and you acknowledge that on an ongoing basis, 
you essentially amplify it in your energy, aligning you with the divine, which is abundance, prosperity, and love. And so the more you actively, consistently honor that inside of yourself, you can't help but have more of everything that's wonderful and benevolent in this human experience. That's the game. That's how it works. It's an energy game. Well, I can say that if people are ready for a shift, if you stumbled upon this, this interaction and you know you're, you're saying, that's me, I, I'm ready. I, I'm so sick and tired of what I've been doing and what my results are. I need to try something different. I, I need some real information. Then you've come to the right place. Because my system works every time, all the time, if you work it. And it takes a little time. And it's, it's an investment in yourself. And I encourage people to step up to the plate on their own behalf. Rise into your power and authority. Claim it. Say, this is mine. I want it now. I'm signing up. I'm here. I'm doing it. It's that easy. opportunity and there are no accidents. People may feel they've stumbled upon this as, as some random act, but there really are no accidents. You know, the person who wrote the foreword to my book, Daniel Brinkley, has a great saying, I believe in coincidence, I've just never seen one, and it really is true. I mean, how often can you look back on your life and say, oh, that was just random, that was just a coincidence. Really, everything is kind of connected. So I would invite people to ask themselves, is this random to you? Or does it resonate? And if so, maybe it's something that 